We've already discussed on the animal kingdom. Remember, mammals, fish, birds, amphibian, and reptile? Let's look at the concept map of biodiversity. First, we have the term biodiversity. Then, we have living organisms. Living organisms is divided into the plant kingdom and animal kingdom. Animal kingdom? Done! Plant kingdom? Well, that's today's topic. Before we go on about the plant kingdom, let me ask you this question. Do you like plants? You should. You see, plants nourish our bodies. They provide us with food that sustains us and the oxygen that we breathe. Ah, fresh air! Fine day! I'll take a walk. Oh, it's getting hot! Plants provide shade over our heads and cool carpets under our feet while surrounding us with beautiful colors red, green, orange, purple Ah, I can go on and on and on You see, I like plants and I'm here to get you to like plants. I'm a frog. I eat insects and insects eat plants. Where do I live? Over yonder where it's damp with lots of plants and insects. Delicious! The plant kingdom can be divided into two groups, flowering plants and non-flowering plants. Flowering plants. Plants that produce flowers are called flowering plants. They comprise about 90% of the plant kingdom. They come in variety of shapes and sizes. All flowering plants produce reproductive organs called flowers. A flower is composed of four major parts, petals, sepals, stamens, and one or more pistils. Flowering plants produce flowers and seed-bearing fruits, which will then become new plants. In order for flowering plants to produce seeds, it is necessary for the flowers to be pollinated. Flowers with colorful petals and sepals are insect pollinated. whereas flowers without colorful petals and sepals are wind-pollinated. During pollination, pollen grains must be transferred from the male anthers to the receptive female stigma. The agents of pollination can be wind, water, birds, mammals, An insect. Insect 
is one of the agents of pollination. Insects also feed on plants. Mmm, that's why I like plants. You do eat vegetables, don't you? They make you strong and healthy. There are some flowering plants that do not produce seeds. These plants grow through vegetative propagation. Vegetative propagation means to grow more of the same plants from the original ones. Examples of such plants are the onion and potato plants. Flowering plants can be further classified into monocotyledons and dicotyledons. Dicotyledons form a bigger group to monocotyledons. Monocotyledons are plants with a single cotyledon. Cotyledon is like a seed leaf. It stores food and serves as a food reservoir. It is used by the seed in germination. Examples of monocotyledon plants are grass, rice, and coconut. Dicotyledons are plants with seeds that have two large starch-filled cotyledons. It is used by the seed in germination. Examples of dicotyledons are peas, balsam, and hibiscus. Apart from the difference between the seeds of monocotyledons and dicotyledons, there are also other different features that separate them. Monocotyledon has long, narrow leaves with parallel veins, such as grasses. And dicotyledon has broad leaves with branched veins, such as the hibiscus. Monocotyledon has soft, non-woody stem. And dicotyledon has woody stem. Monocotyledon has a fibrous root system, whereas dicotyledon has tap root system. The parts of monocotyledon flowers are all typically number 3, or a multiple of 3. Dicotyledon flowers are arranged in fours and fives or multiples of fours and fives. Non flowering plants Plants that do not produce flowers are called non flowering plants. These plants usually have no true leaves, stems, or roots. Since they do not have flowers, so they cannot have seeds. They grow spores instead of seeds. Non-flowering plants can be divided into four groups, algae, mosses, ferns, and conifers. Algae Algae encompass several different groups of living organisms that capture light energy through photosynthesis. Algae live in water and are usually found in damp and wet places. Some are unicellular, such as Pleurococcus while others are multicellular, such as spirogyra and seaweed. Some algae, like the seaweed, are used as food or harvested for useful substances such as agar, 
of fertilizer. Moss Mosses are small green plants that look wonderfully like soft carpets of green. They live in wet and bright conditions. Such as at the sides of drains or damp walls. Mosses are small in size. They grow to about 2 to 3 cm in height. Mosses depend on external moisture to transport nutrients. Because of this, they prefer damp places. Mosses also hold loose dirt in place, thus preventing landslides. You see, I love to laze around mosses, especially at the drains. They are wet and damp. Mmm, my kind of place. Ferns. There are over 10,000 species of ferns found in the world. Most of them are found in the tropics, where tree ferns may grow as high as 40 feet. Ferns prefer to live in environments that have low light and relatively high levels of moisture and humidity. They especially flourish in tropical forests. Ferns have true leaves, stems, or roots. Ferns reproduce from spores. Clusters of spore bags can be seen at the back of a mature fern. They are epiphytes, plants that grow on other plants but do not cause harm on the plants. Conifers Conifers bear cones instead of real fruits. They have true roots and woody stem. The leaves of many conifers are long, thin and needle-like. Conifers reproduce by seeds present in the cones. Most conifers are wind-pollinated. Phew, we've learned quite a lot today. Let's look at the concept map of biodiversity again and add in the bits that we've gathered on the plant kingdom. Concept map Biodiversity Here we have living organisms. Then we have the plant and animal kingdoms. The animal kingdom is divided into two groups, invertebrates and vertebrates. Invertebrates are animals without backbone, while vertebrates are animals with backbones. Vertebrates are classified into five groups. They are mammals, fish, birds, amphibians, and reptiles. The plant kingdom is divided into two groups, flowering and non-flowering plants. Flowering plants can be classified into two groups, monocotyledon and dicotyledon whereas non-flowering plants is divided into four, algae, mosses, ferns, and conifers. Importance of Biodiversity Biodiversity is the diversity of living organisms. I may be a frog, but I'm very much aware of my surroundings. 
Organisms depend on one another for survival. Organisms such as bacteria and fungi help rich soil with nutrients to maintain soil fertility. Plants use these nutrients for growth. Plants help to maintain the amount of carbon dioxide and oxygen in the air. All of the oxygen available for living organisms comes from plants. Among the steps that can be taken to maintain biodiversity are Carry out reforestation Set up forest reserves to serve as water catchment areas and for preserving wildlife Encourage education, organize programs to preserve endangered animals and plants Ban poaching Protect endangered species of plants and animals Enforce anti-pollution law. Plants beautify the environment. Their beauty is an important element in the world. Humans coexist with many animals and are often quite aware of the animals in their environment. Let's not forget the animals' rights to be in this world, since they do not have the voice to express their feelings and grievances. Got to catch some insects at the swamp over there. Bye, Ribbit. Ribbit.